Okay, there we go for the <coughs> second talk, a bit on the same subject. <coughs> that is, this, this will describe another way of uh, partitioning uh, <coughs> beta diversity uh, using uh, <coughs> two families of coefficients that we have seen before. So again, uh, the beginning is pretty much the same as what we have seen. So I will go, not go in detail through that. So what we were doing during the previous talk, uh, uh, here I will only focus on the dissimilarity matrices. I will use four dissimilarity matrices. And we know we can compute uh, total sum of squares and total beta diversity from that. So this does it in a very different way. The idea here is to partition the dissimilarities in a dissimilarity matrix like this uh, you, into two components that are called replacement and richness difference. Now, uh, during the past five or six years, two different methods have been proposed by opposing groups of scientists. One group is mostly Andres Bazelga, and then a few people have joined him in publishing papers with him. He is uh, in Spain. And the other group is led by uh, uh, Podani, who is a very prolific uh, <coughs> worker in numerical ecology in Hungary. And he has been doing that with the various co-authors. Each group has proposed ways of partitioning. The, first, the Jacquard and Sorensen indices for presence-absence data uh, into these components, replacement and richness difference. And then later, the two groups added the quantitative forms of Jacquard and Sorensen. For Jacquard, it is this coefficient called Rujiska that I discovered when uh, I started studying in detail these methods. And for Sorensen, it is the percentage difference. So in this talk, I will focus on the Podany approach, but the function, because I can not have time to describe everything, but the function that is available in the ADE spatial package that I wrote uh, contains the coefficients from both groups. Now, uh, and there, was, there was some sort of a fight in the literature going on for a couple of years, saying my coefficients are better than your coefficients, this sort of thing. So I decided to look into these things and figure out if there was one type of coefficient that was definitely superior to the other. And I found that this was not the case and that there was room for both types of coefficients. I tried to uh, reestablish peace between the two fighting functions with the paper that I published there and by uh, including the coefficients from both groups in one are a function that everybody, everybody can use and uh, experiment with. Now, the basic concept is quite simple. This is for species presence absence data. You may uh, remember when we compute the <coughs> coefficients for presence absence data between site, let's see if we put site one here, site two there with presence absence, presence absence, and the cells are called A, B, C, and D. These are the A, B, C, and D component. Well, essentially, A, B, C, and A, B, and C, because the D component in the Jacquard and Sorensen and the Cs are, is never considered, the double absence, the double zeros, they are never considered, and we know why. So here are the components A, B, and C for two sites in which we have a number of species. These five species are present at both sites. They are the A component. B uh, here are, well, these are the, others, the, the other species from site one uh, that form the B component. And these are not present at site two. And these species are present at site two, but not at site one. But they are different species. So when we want to compute the dissimilarity, it will be B plus C divided by some denominator. And in Jacquard, the denominator is A plus B plus C. 
in Sorensen it is 2a plus b plus c. But they, these two coefficients differ only in their denominator. They both take b plus c as the numerator for the dissimilarity coefficient. Now, replacement is the number of species that are found there <coughs> uh, yeah, that, that you can consider it as ha having replaced the same number of species at the other side. So you take the minimum of B and C, and you say this minimum here has been replaced at the other side by other species. So these three or any of those species would do. It, it does not indicate that it is this specific these three specific species have replaced those. But that three species that are not found here have replaced three species there. Okay? And the replacement component will be these three plus these three. So two times the minimum of B and C. For the richness difference, well, this site is more rich than that one because it has five more species that have not replaced those, but in the, there is an extra group of five species that uh, uh, form the replacement component. So with that, we will construct different indices. I will repeat this picture in small version at the top of the next few slides. Uh, okay, so the same picture here with the coefficient in <coughs> written uh, with the, the components written in the present, uh, in the column for presence absence data. Later, I will have uh, coefficients for abundance data in this column. But I will use the same presentation uh, <coughs> during the next few slides. So replacement is two times the minimum of B plus C. It is this thing here. And it can be computed in this way. R uh, richness difference. Here it will be called abundance difference, but the richness difference is B minus C. That is, here we have eight species minus three that, are, that go into the replacement. <coughs> uh, so the richness difference is five. And the dissimilarity is B plus C. Okay, so this just repeats what we have seen. And now we will construct the coefficients for the Jacquard group. The denominator will be A plus B plus C. So we will apply the de denominator to these numerators. For the whole dissimilarity, this is the numerator, this is the denominator. For replacement, <coughs> this is the numerator and this is the denominator. This is what we have here. And for richness difference, this is the numerator and this is the denominator. Okay? So simple construction. At least it looks simple in this uh, synthetic presentation. <coughs> it looked much more complicated from the original literature on this subject. Now, same uh, slide, but for the Sorensen group. The only difference is that the denominator is now 2a plus b plus c in every one of these three components. Simple again. Uh, now, what do we do when we have abundance data? This same coefficient <coughs> it has to involve now the abundances. And the A component, which is what is common between the two sites, uh, is explained by this example where I have four species. And each, in each uh, sub-graph, uh, it, it, we compare site one and site two. So for this species, at site one, we have this many, and at site two, we have this many. So the portion in common is a component of A here, A1. And what is the, the difference here is a component of C from species one to for site two. So C will go into this sum. Species two, we have this, <coughs> these abundances with this many in common that will go into the calculation of A there. And uh, here we have something, uh, all these uh, individuals that form the abundances unique to site two. So it will go in this sum for B. Uh, for site 
uh, for species three, it is only present at site one. So B3 is all of that, and it would go in B. And then for, site, uh, for species four, the two species have equal abundances. So A will go in the A sum there. Okay. So we sum all the A's from there, there, and there. All the B's from there and there. And all the C's, there is only that one. And that gives us a large A, large B, large C that we will now use <coughs> as measurements of uh, the dissimilarity. The dissimilarity will be B plus C, yeah, while A is the similarity portion. And replacement will be two times the minimum of B, of B and C. And uh, <coughs> Uh, richness, uh, this time abundance difference will be the absolute value of B minus C. And we will put that into coefficients in exactly the same way as before. In the Jacquard group, <coughs> this was the Jacquard dissimilarity. Now we have the Rogiska dissimilarity constructed in the same way as the Jacquard dissimilarity, but with the large A, B, and C values there because the denominator is large A plus B plus C. And we will construct the replacement in the same way, two times the minimum of B and C, that is this component divided by the denominator. And the, the abundance difference is constructed with this numerator and this denominator. Very simple. So this is a new coefficient that I have not introduced yet. Now, you will recognize the good old percentage difference, alias bring, we entered it, where the denominator is 2a plus b plus c. You obtain exactly the same value as with the formulation that I showed in my talk on Tuesday morning. But on Tuesday morning, the letters uh, a, b, and c meant something different than here. Um, but the calculation result is the same. It is just that the abundances are assembled in different ways. So the percentage, for the percentage difference, the similarity, it's computed like this. Uh, the replacement component is this divided by the denominator. And the abundance difference is this divided by the denominator. Uh, some of these uh, abundance coefficients had never been described, so I filled the holes that uh, the original author here, Podani, and uh, also for but the Basalga group had never described. So I said, well, let's complete the list with all of these. OK, the fish uh, data, you know about that. Uh, <coughs> and uh, now what we will do is compute the dissimilarity and split it into replacement and richness difference. And uh, by the way, I don't know if uh, I pointed that out. In each case, the uh, replacement plus the richness difference amounts to the dissimilarity. So this is a true decomposition of each value in the dissimilarity matrix. Hence this presentation where the dissimilarity is split between replacement and richness difference. If you add this matrix plus that one, you recover. Uh, you find again the dissimilarity. So it is a true decomposition into these two components. And we will see what we can do with it. Here for the fish data, I use the uh, presence absence data there. Could have done it also with the abundance data. Uh, total beta computed as uh, we did in the previous talk gives us a jacquard a value based on Jacquard of 0.32 and on Sorensen of 0.27, let's say. Now remember that this is a, these are dissimilarities between 0 and 1. So the maximum value that can be attained is 0 0.5 with this, <coughs> these two coefficients for total beta. So this, is, this divided by that is 65% of the maximum. And this divided by that is 53% of the maximum. <coughs> so the, the, they are well diversified. 
uh, well, 53% is very close to what we had after cord transformation using the abundance data. I think it was 53 or 4, 54%. Uh, now, if we look at the components of replacement, if we add all these dissimilar uh, of these the replacement values and dividing divide them by uh, BD total, we find 28 percent, and it is the same value that we find there. See, <coughs> uh, and in the same way for all the richness differences, if we add them up, yes, we can add them up. Uh, and divide by BD total, we find 72%. So this plus that is equal to one, showing that these two matrices have really uh, <coughs> separated or uh, <coughs> split the total beta diversity into two component matrices. Uh, and this shows already an interesting result. It shows that beta diversity in the River is dominated by <coughs> richness difference, not by replacement. That is, as we go down the river, uh, <coughs> we have uh, difference in richness. That is, richness increases as we go down the river, except at these three sites that are polluted. So we have more and more species as we go. And we lose few species. We lose a little bit because it is not purely richness difference. There is a bit of replacement. For instance, the brown trout disappears after the first three sites. But the main phenomenon is addition of species along the course of the river. This, I think, is an interesting result. Instead of focusing as to what happens between pairs of sites, we can have a statement for the whole course of the river. Uh, now, how to represent that? I scratch my head for a while to determine how to do that. And here I decided to compare each of the sites. Of course, you see here number eight has been removed from the data because there is no fish that has been caught by Dr. Verneau. And compare each one to the last site, number 30. Okay? Uh, because this has nearly all the species. It is uh, nearly the most, the most rich. The most rich is this one, site 29. But anyway, I compared all the other sites to site number 30 and uh, look at the pairwise dissimilarities. Black is the jacquard dissimilarity. Uh, and the pairwise then values of replacement and richness difference. So we see again that the curve uh, as the dissimilarity. Each time I compare the site to that one. So the dissimilarity is high because there is no species in common between site 1 and site 30. Here there is only the brown trout, and here there is no brown trout. So the species composition is slow, totally different, also for site 2. Then the dissimilarity decreases a little because there must be one species common between site 3 and 30, and so on. It, then it goes up again, becomes more more different, and then the dissimilarity falls. And then at the three polluted sites, the dissimilarity increases a lot. And then it becomes low here because these sites are pretty much uh, similar. But we see that the overall dissimilarity is followed very well by the richness difference curve that follows the dissimilarity because this is the main component of the jacquard dissimilarity, while the replacement portion uh, does its things on its side. Uh, and there is uh, no great uh, contribution to the total diversity. <coughs> and here, for reference, I use species richness. That is pretty much uh, the mirror image reverse uh, to the, uh, the, the picture of the overall dissimilarity. So that's one way of using of these decomposed coefficients, these the elements of the richness difference and replacement matrices and dissimilarity matrix in a graph that tells us what happens along the course of the river without focusing on individual species. It is just in terms of overall dissimilarity. Now we can use ordination, of course, for the 
and Sorensen dissimilarity. So it gives us a story like this with site one here at the top of the river. Then for a while we have about the same species composition. Then we go in the long loop here. Then we go to the polluted sites, 23, 24, 25, very different from all the others. Then we go back to some normality in species composition. And then uh, <coughs> if we compute the LCBDs from the Sorensen uh, matrix, we obtain this with, again, these three sites having high values and these three sites having high, high values. Uh, <coughs> So this is not surprising. It is like what we obtained with the quantitative data after core transformation in the previous talk. Now, what is new is that we can do the same thing with the re replacement and richness difference components. We can use the whole matrix of replacement and do an ordination by principal coordinate analysis. Uh, in the appendices of the paper, there is uh, at some point on page 22 of the appendices, I think, uh, there is a table showing which one of these components produces a matrix that is metric, uh, 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 that is metric or Euclidean, yes, either in its original form or in the square root form. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, with the Sorensen coefficient, it is the, I think it is the richness difference that can be Euclidean but the replacement is never fully Euclidean, even after square root transformation. <coughs> but uh, still, we can uh, do this uh, little story here with site number one for the, the replacement portion. It goes like this. It goes to the polluted sites, and this is what happens in the lower course of the river, and this is what happens in the upper course of the river here. And we can compute LCBDs from this. We have a dissimilarity matrix. We can do Gower centering, take the diagonal values, and they are our LCBD indices. Okay? And they are just plotted here. I didn't do any test of significance. And we see that we have high values at sites 11 to 15 here, and high values, of course, in the three polluted sites that are there. So the LCBDs again are the squares of the distance, the squares of the distances between the centroid and each site, and those that are uh, farther than, let's say, this circle. This is these are the farthest sites, 11 to 15. They have big bubbles, and these are far also from the origin, 23, 24, 25. They are there. So again, this shows us where are the uh, sites where high replacement occurs, okay? A funny thing happens with the uh, richness difference. Uh, yeah, this is a mistake. This is richness difference, not replacement. Bad copy and paste on my part. Uh, so you, we can take the metrics of richness difference and do an ordination by principal coordinate analysis. And when we do it with uh, the uh, Sorensen index or with the quantitative form, the uh, percentage difference, all the points are on, in, on an arch like this, a perfect arch. <coughs> so this is an advantage of using uh, the Sorensen or percentage difference compared to the Jacquard and Rezuska indices. And everything is perfectly in line here. But then I added lines to show the sequence from 1 to 2 to 3, 4, uh, after 4, 5 must be somewhere here. Uh, oh, no, oh, no. From 4, we go to 5 here. 5, then come back to 6, 7, uh, 8 is not there, 9 is at the same place, uh, 8 has been removed. 10 to 13, then 14, 15, 16, and so on. And then uh, after site 22, 23 goes there, pollution. So we lose most of the species. Uh, and where are 24, 25? Oh, uh, okay. 24 and 25 is, are here. 
so fewer species than there, but we gain a few species, and then go back to normal there. So it is an interesting story to follow it there, and we have it in schematic form by taking the diagonal values of the centered matrix, and these are our LCBD indices, showing these three sites, one, two, three, as having big distances, and 23 as having a big square distance, actually, from the centroid. So these four have big bubbles. Okay? So these are the interesting sites where richness difference is, uh, is not smooth along the river, but the, the, the sequence is violated, and we have a very small number of species in, at these sites. Okay? Uh, what can we do? Oh, yes. Now I uh, tried to see if we could do something more than what had been done in previous papers by Podani and Baselga in terms of using these coefficients to test hypotheses, that is, to compare these component matrices to uh, <coughs> explanatory uh, variables. And here, the first explanatory variables and that I used was to take all the environmental data uh, in the numerical ecology with our book, all the explanatory variables for the Du River, and I computed uh, ward clustering hierarchical classification, and I took simply two groups, a bit like what uh, Daniel did when he determined three groups. Here I did two groups of sites the upper course and the lower course, you know, a rough classification into two groups. And I tried to see which one of these components were uh, related to that. So I must explain what I did here, <coughs> because it involves, uh, it is like doing, doing an RDA. And in an RDA, I would use <coughs> the Y data against the environmental data, environmental data X, or here my environmental data have become a classification into two groups, uh, <coughs> 1 to 22 and 23. So I cut it here, group 1 and group 2. Okay, So this is my explanatory variable. Uh, <coughs> RDA works fine if we can take the, this similarity matrix and uh, decompose it using principal coordinate analysis and put the principal coordinates into the Y matrix. This is the DBRDA approach that I showed yesterday in one of my concluding slides. So that works fine. But here we have at least one of the matrices that is never Euclidean, if, even if we take the square root. So there is another approach to doing the equivalent of RDA, but from the uh, dissimilarity matrix here. The dissimilarity matrix, that can be D or richness difference or replacement. So we take the dissimilarity matrix against this or that, and this method developed by uh, Brian McArdle and Marty Anderson in, uh, well, Brian McArdle is, uh, they, they are both in New Zealand, and uh, in a 2001 paper, they developed an F-test of significance of the RDA, computed from this, but it is exactly the same as if we de were decomposing it uh, using principal coordinate analysis and doing a normal RDA. But it can be done even if the matrix is not Euclidean. That's why we keep it in that form. So the mathematics is interesting. And I think I have included that function into ADE spatial. Did I? Anyway, now it is in vegan. I sent it to uh, Yari Aksanen, and he included that in vegan. Uh, so this is to explain that it was, the F-test was done in a mathematically different way, but it is the same as the F-test of RDA. So I found that D, what, and the whole distance, the Jacquard dissimilarity matrix, here I use the Jacquard. Yes? Yes, the Jacquard. It was significantly explained by the classification. 
but replacement was significantly explained also by the classification, but more significantly than that. Whereas uh, richness difference was not significantly explained by the classification. So D contains this plus that. So the component that is really related to the classification in two, of the river in two sections is the replacement component, not the richness difference component. And you see that this p-value is more significant than that one. So this is really the result that should be interpreted. Now I kept going and used the whole matrix of environmental variables. I must have done forward selection. <coughs> so uh, yeah, here I, uh, I, I did that after transforming these uh, data using principal coordinate analysis and for forward selection. But then I did the test here using the McArdle Anderson uh, uh, test and found that the, uh, the whole dis dissimilarity was explained by slope, hardness, nitrate, and uh, oxygen concentration. Replacement was explained by variation of oxygen concentration. And richness difference was explained by the three other components found there. So that was, uh, I thought, a very interesting result because splitting the dissimilarity in two, uh, two components showed that the explanatory variables that were significant there were also split into two groups and related to these two different components that are orthogonal components in the story. So that is extremely interesting. It goes deeper than just analyzing the dissimilarity metrics. It, here we really touch the ecology, what happens to the community composition data in terms of these two processes and how it is related to the environmental variables. Well, at least I like that result. Uh, in the, uh, the original uh, paper, there are all other graphical tricks, uh, methods of analysis that have been proposed by Podani and Schmira and by Podani and co-authors. And I use them, these, for example, these triangular plots in the analysis of the two river data that I used in the paper that was published in uh, Global Ecology and Biogeography two years ago. OK, so the conclusion of that part is and that replacement and richness difference in disease can be interpreted and related to ecosystem processes separately, as we saw in this example. Uh, and the innovation of this uh, decomposition was that the index values can be summed uh, across all pairs of sites uh, to decompose total beta diversity into total replacement and total richness difference components. Previous authors have not done that. So because of the mathematics, that was so simple. I thought if we can <coughs> do the sum of the dissimilarities uh, to, uh, uh, to obtain uh, and the total variance for these indices, remember, these are indices that require to be square rooted, to be Euclidean. So the total variance is the sum of the dissimilarities divided by n and then by n minus 1. Uh, <coughs> and each dissimilarity is the sum of a component of richness difference plus replacement. So these two other uh, matrices can also be summed in the same way and divided by n times n minus 1 to obtain the total variance. And these sums of the replacement and sum of the uh, richness difference component add up to the total beta diversity. So that's another way of fully decomposing total beta instead of only doing it side by side. Local contributions, the LCBD indices, can be done, computed for these two components separately, and they can be mapped, as we have seen. Within a region, differences among the sites measured by these indices can be analyzed and interpreted using explanatory variables, either a classification or a series of environmental variables, as we have seen. A replacement and richness difference matrices can be analyzed by all methods of multivariate data analysis that are appropriate for dissimilarity matrices. Okay. 
And do I have anything else? Yeah, well, the reference. OK. Questions about that? I realize that this is new to, to you, unless you had seen the papers and were already in this sort of literature. But for most of you, this may be new. So if you don't have questions now, maybe you will have questions this afternoon where there are exercises where you can play with the function. There are examples at the end of the function, and I will encourage you to run them and look at what uh, you obtain. And maybe the, you can uh, understand more fully how useful this method of decomposition of the total beta diversity can be for your analysis. I hope it will be useful to some of you. And with the new package ADE Spatial, everything is available in there.